Let's look at the method of sections. And this is the second method that is traditionally used to analyze simple trusses. So the method of sections is um, using rigid body equilibrium. If you remember back to the method of joints, the method of joints is basically using particle equilibrium to identify or to calculate the forces in structural elements. So in the method of sections, in a sort of using particle equilibrium, we're gonna, we're gonna use rigid body equilibrium. Which means that for problems that are in 2D, we're going to have a total of three equations of equilibrium that we can write. Forces, uh, some of the forces in one direction, some of the forces in another direction, and some of the moments. So for 2D problems, we can solve for three unknowns per free body diagram. If you look back at the method of joints, in the method of joints, we have particle equilibrium. And for particle equilibrium, we can only solve for two unknowns for each of the free body diagrams that we, that we do. All right, so what's, what's the, what is the main uh, procedure? Um, the general, the general uh, procedure. So the first thing is um, we want to find your reaction forces and again, this might not be absolutely needed in all of the cases, uh, but in many cases, we need to find the reaction forces. And for this particular step, um, you're gonna have to do the free body diagram of the whole structure to be able to find those reaction forces. Then the second step is to identify a cut and I'm going to explain this in a minute in an example and usually usually the rule of thumb is no more than three elements are cut and this is going to make more sense when I show you the example and then what we're going to do is uh, draw a free body diagram of the cut. Uh, that means the uh, a portion of the structure. And uh, then uh, uh, write down the equations of equilibrium and solve for unknowns, right? And then we can repeat two, three, and four as necessary. So if more cuts are needed, we can go back and, and repeat the process, do another free body diagram, write, uh, write down the equations of equilibrium for that cut and repeat the process. All right, so for the example that I want to show, and, and all, of, all of these methods um, are best explained, in my opinion, using an example, because the concepts of equilibrium, free body diagrams, we already study all of those concepts, so this is only the application of those fundamentals. So for this example, I wanna treat the same problem that we had for the uh, method of joins. And uh, the problem is something like this. We have a truss that looks something like this. Let me see. Just doing the drawing of the joints. And it's something along these lines.
Ah, something something like that and we have another two more this is not really a simple truss right it uh, doesn't have it's not built a triangle so we need to do two more elements look something like this and this end we have a roller and the other end we have a pin uh, we have five kilonewtons force in this node, which is A. Then we have five kilonewtons at B, 10 kilonewtons at C, 15 kilonewtons at D, and five kilonewtons at E. And here we have F, G, H. The horizontal distance between each of those nodes is two meters. And then the vertical distance between nodes, so this distance over here, this is one meter, this is one meter. Okay. And what we want to find is we're going to find the forces in elements. CD, GD, and I'm going to add GF. That's something that we didn't do last time, but I want to add it here. All right, so that's that's the problem that we're going to solve, okay? And um, we're basically trying to analyze this, this truss. In the previous video, we obtained the reaction forces, so I'm not going to go through the derivation of the reaction forces. You can go back to the previous video and see that. And so that will be our, our first step, right? To identify the reaction forces. We're gonna use those reaction forces in a minute. So that, that's a common step between the method of sections and the method of joints. The second step, which is one of the important po points in, um, in this uh, method of sections, is to identify a cut um, for us to be able to um, do our free body diagram and derive our equations of equilibrium. And the idea is to identify a location we can cut elements, no more than three elements as a rule of thumb, and then we can use either side of that cut as a rigid body. So let's go back to our structure. And if I look at the elements that we need to identify or to need to calculate forces for, it's gonna be this element CD, this element GD, and this element GF. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna propose that we do a cut right here. This is gonna be our cut. And I am going to take the right-hand side of that cut. What I mean is I'm going to take this side of the structure. I'm going to write that free body diagram. And since I need to have this in equilibrium, at the point where the cut is, I'm going to write the force, the tension or compression forces on that free body diagram. All right. So I'm going to write, I'm going to do a free body diagram of the right-hand side of the cut. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Go here to the next page. So, free body diagram of the cut. And by the way, it does not matter if we choose the right hand side or the left hand side. 
the answer should be exactly the same. So it doesn't matter if I do this cut over here or if I do the smaller section on the right hand side. I'm choosing the smaller section on the right hand side because I will have to deal with this with less forces. So I, here I have a 5 kN force, a 15 kN force. On the left hand side I have a 10, a 5, a 5 plus the reaction forces. So because of that, I, I kind of decided to go with the right hand side of the cut. But the answer should be exactly the same if you use the left hand side. All right. So for this free body diagram of the cut, I'm gonna see the following. Let me see if I can do it over here. All right, let me start over here. So let's say that this is going to be E. And now um, we have E, we have, here is F. And on, on that on that on that cut, right, I see this whole element, I see this whole element, I see this element completely, but I only see portions of the elements that are in red. So I'm gonna draw the elements that are complete, and then the only a little section of the elements that are cut, and then I'm gonna make the assumption that the forces on those elements are tensile forces. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the arrow coming out of those elements. Okay, so we have E, we have F, uh, we have D, and the elements between them are all complete. They have not been cut. And now I have a small section of this element. Uh, that will be FG. I'm gonna have a small section of element CD and a small section of element uh, DG. Okay, just to help me, just to help me, I am going to make here, I'm gonna put here the nodes, although this is not really part of the, it should not be part of the free body diagram because it's not, it's not connected, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these two uh, elements to help me do some calculations later on. So C, and G are right there, right? But they're not connected because we're gonna only write down the right-hand side of, of the cut. All right, so um, in terms of forces, what forces do we know? Well, we have our five kilonewton force. We have our 15 kilonewton force. We also have the reaction forces at E and we said that our horizontal or the EX was zero, but the EY was 22.5 kilonewtons. And again, this reaction force was obtained in a previous video, so feel free to go back and watch this video um, for, for those calculations. And the unknown forces, now the unknown forces, I'm gonna do them in red. So I have this force that I'm assuming that is in tension right? And that will be force FG. This force, which is also I'm going to make the assumption that is in tension, that will be force DG or GD, whatever you want to call it. It's just the magnitude of the force. And in this case, we have another force over here, and that will be force CD or DC. All right, very good. Need to add some distances. So this distance is two meters. And again, I'm gonna write the distance to my G to help me with some calculations later on. And the vertical distances, here we have, this is one meter. This is one meter. And I also need my axis. I'm gonna put my X axis going this direction, Y axis going up and down. That should be more vertical, sorry about that. And um, 
And I also going to say that we need some angles. So these angles over here, we also calculate them in the previous video. That angle here is theta, same angle over here. And we said that theta um, was equal to 26.56 six or 0.6 degrees. I'm going to do the four significant figures in there. All right. So that's, that's all the information that we have. Um, again, this is extremely important for you to do the free body diagram of the cut. So the first thing is to be able to identify where to make the cut. And then the second part is to do the free body diagram. And all what I've done, if you look at our previous figure is I cut it right here. And I basically erase or the left hand side of the drawing. And then in the places where I cut, I put my unknown forces, right? My force in here, my force in here, and my force in here. And that's how I find this free body diagram right here. Right. All right, I think that's it. That's a full free body diagram. All right, the next step is to write the equations of equilibrium and solve for the unknowns. So in this case, uh, I can do some of the forces in X, I can do some of the forces in Y, or I can do some of the moments. And I'm going to go ahead and do some of the moments. Now, why can we use some of the moments in the method of sections and not in the method of joints? Method of joints is about particle equilibrium and all of the forces are going through the same point. So the moments about that point will be zero. Now, in this case, we have a rigid body. And since we have that rigid body, we can use those uh, some, of, some of moments. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do everything with the sum of the moments because they, the calculations are going to be a little bit easier. And the first one that I'm going to start with is do some of the moments about D. And the reason why I'm gonna start there is because two unknowns are going through that point and I'm going to end up with only one unknown. I'm only, only going to have F, F, G. All right, so let's just start with the sum, some of the moments about D. We're in equilibrium, static equilibrium, that should be equal to zero. And let's see what do we have. Well, okay. 15 kN force produces no moment about D. This force, neither this force produces moments about D. We end up with the 22.5 kN, the 5 kN, and F, F, G. Those are the only three forces that produce moments about G. For the 22.5 kN force, we have a positive moment, and it would be 22.5 times 2 meters. So that would be 22.5 times two positive moment. For the, um, see what we have. For the five kilonewton force, it will be a negative moment and it will be five times two as well. So negative. five times two. And for F, F, G, we're gonna have is, uh, it will be a negative moment, it will be F, F, G times one, right? One is the perpendicular distance between D and the line of action of the force. So it will be minus, uh, let's do it like this, F, F, G times one. So from this equation, I can solve for this and say that F, F, G is going to be equal to uh, 45 minus 10, which is 35 kilonewtons. And since we need to report whether or not this member is in tension or compression, we can say that this is 35 kilonewtons in tension. Tension, because my assumption over here is that it was in tension. I got a positive result 
and therefore my, my FFG will be in tension. Very good. Now let's find another point that we can use to, to do some of the moments. And we're going to end up um, uh, canceling two forces. Uh, now we do that we do have FFG, so that's not as, as needed, but but just for the sake of of um, of the exercise, let's do that. So if I think about this FFG and I think about this FDG, I can do some of the moments about G. And by this by doing the some of the moments about G, my only red force will be FDC, right? Because that's the only force that does not go through G. So let's do that. Some of the moments about G. By the way, this is first answer. There you go. Some of the moments about G. Okay, let's see. What do we have? All right, we have the 22.5 kilonewtons produces a positive moment, and the perpendicular distance will be 4 meters. 22.5. Times four. The five kilonewton force will be a negative moment about G, and the perpendicular distance between the point of interest and the line of action of the force will also be four meters. Five times four. And now we have this 15 kilonewton force, it does produce a moment about G will be a negative moment and it will be 15 times 2. Then the next one is FDC. I don't have the perpendicular distance to FDC. We, we might be able to calculate it, but I think a simpler way of doing it is resolving this into my X and my Y component. Uh, for my x component, we have a uh, FDC cosine of theta, and the perpendicular distance will be this distance, which is one meter. And that produces a positive moment. So positive FDC cosine of theta times one. And for my vertical component of FDC it will be FDC sine of theta, and it also produces a positive moment about G, and the perpendicular distance will be two. So it will be plus FDC sine of theta, that's the component of the force, and two will be the perpendicular distance between the point of interest to, to the line of action of the force. All right, very good. So all we need to do now is to solve for FDC is the only unknown in this equation, right? Because this is all equal to zero because we are in a static equilibrium. So what we have is uh, something like this. Zero is equal to 90 minus 20 minus 30. And if we have this cosine of 26.56, that would be uh, plus uh, 0.8945 FDC and two times sine of 26.56 uh, will be equal to plus 0 0.8943 FDC. We can take FDC as a common factor. So this number plus this number, and then that goes as a denominator. So my FDC, solving, solving FDC in this equation, will be equal to minus 40 over 1.789 which will give me minus 22.36 kilonewtons. And now I'm gonna report it, and I report it as 22.4 kilonewtons. Negative, that means that is in 
compression because my original assumption is that it was in tension. All right, so here we were able to find only one equation that has one unknown, same thing that we did with the previous equation. And again, the key was to be able to find the common point uh, where, where uh, forces come together. That point does not have to be in the place, uh, in, in the area where we where we drawn the cut. It can be outside the area. That's why I put this G and I can put this C in there as well. Very good. Now, the only force that I, I'm still needing to find is if uh, dg, right, this force over here, and what I'm going to do is do some of the moments about E, right? If I do some of the moments about E, that 5 kN force that is coming vertically on E and that 22.5 kN force connected to E are going to produce no moment, but also if DC goes through E and if FC go through E, so it's going to be a fairly uh, simple equation to solve, hopefully. All right, so let's do that. So some of the moments about E equal to zero because we are in a static equilibrium. And let's see, what do we get? So here we have our um, 15 kilonewtons producing a positive moment about E, and it will be 15 times two. And um, we have, let's see what we have. That's it, right? No, there are, these two forces produce no more moment about E. So now the other one is FDG. And FDG we can also resolve in our two components in the horizontal and the vertical direction. The one in the horizontal direction will be FDG cosine of 26.56 and that creates a positive moment about E. The perpendicular distance um, will be this distance, which is one meter. So that will be plus, F, oops, sorry about that, F dg cosine of theta, which is 26.56, times that one meter. And the last one that we have is the ver this, this uh, vertical component of FDG, which produces a positive moment about E, and it will be FDG sine of theta times two, which is the perpendicular distance between the point of interest to that line of action of the force. So that will be FDG sine of theta times two. That's my equation of equilibrium of the sum of the moments about E. No more forces that produce moments about E. All right, so we can solve this and say zero is equal to 30 plus, and I'm gonna take uh, FDG as the common factor here. So this will be 0 0.8945 plus 0 0.8943. And that comes from two times the sine of theta or the sine of 26.56. This is all times FDG. That's my common factor. So FDG after solving for this, so it will be 30 over this, uh, and it will be negative, it gives me minus 16.76 kilonewtons, and the way that I report it is FDG is equal to 16.8 kilonewtons, negative. That means that is in compression because my original assumption is that it was in tension. So there you have it. So F FG was 35 kilonewtons, and we did that by using the sum of the moments about D. 
uh, FDC was 22.4 kilonewtons, and we did that by using the slope of the moments about G. And FDG was 16.8 kilonewtons, and we did that, calculated that with the slope of the moments about E. Now, it, it is not required to only use some of moments. I'm just using that as an example to show you that you can do that. But you can also somewhat use some of the forces in X, some of the forces in Y. And depending on the problem, those equations might be easier to solve. So to summarize again, the general procedure for using this uh, method of sections is to find your reaction forces, number one. Then identify a cut, and that is something that uh, it requires a little bit of practice. Uh, the main idea is to cut no more than three elements, right? Because we only have three equations of equilibrium that we can use. In some occasions, um, it might be possible to cut more, but that's not, that's not uh, the rule of thumb. The rule of thumb is to use three elements. Uh, then draw a free body diagram of the cut and uh, write the equations of equilibrium and solve for unknowns on that cut. And then we can repeat steps two, three, and four as needed. In this particular example, we did not repeat those two, three, and four, but we could do it, right, if we needed to find forces in more elements.